Hi, as part of MacArthur Group's ongoing investor education series, today we're going to be looking at the property clock. Now, in the studio, I have Klaus Wild from Cougar Homes with me. Hi, Klaus. Thanks for the invitation. You're welcome. And today we're going to be looking at what happens directly after the boom period. Now, uh, there's obviously when the boom comes off, the, it, it can't go forever and begins to slow down. And so this part of the series, we're going to be looking at some of the common characteristics of what is happening in that slowdown period and before it moves into the slump. So Klaus, you're at the coalface, you see, you just see traffic coming in to display homes, um, you see people that are wanting to build homes. What do you, what do you start seeing when you're, you know, how do you start noticing the, uh, the slowdown to, uh, is upon us as distinct from the boom stage? A general, um, it's just a softening in the marketplace. People don't seem to have the same urgency that they had in the boom period. Everyone's just a little bit more measured. They're, um, they're taking their time. Um, I actually like this period because um, everyone starts to become nice again. It's, it's easy to deal with the land developers, with your tradespeople. Um, when you say nice, does that mean you can get better terms and conditions and uh, um, and things like that when you yeah, say nice so. yeah absolutely and everyone even returns phone calls in that period so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit nice that yeah, yeah you can't get a phone call return yeah. <laughs> exactly in the boom market no one's got, no one's got any time to talk to you no try and dial a tradie when uh, the boom's on you know it, it's it's a difficult marketplace to be in and also people aren't a, they don't know where the ceiling is and people feel sort of at that, when the slowdown happens, they realise that that the the, 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 the peak has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what's obviously slows the market down too is that is that um, that reaction to sticker shock, and that being, of course, is that you see the price of what people have to pay for their land or their or their home, and that sort of stops them in their tracks a bit because you know it, we move into they start believing well, well not believing but actually feeling that this is unaffordable. And yeah, that, absolutely. And and I think because of that, you see the the volume of sales, uh, whether it be new homes or established homes, the volume of sales actually decreasing. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with the in- investors. They they also start seeing well. You know, I'm not getting, for what I'm paying and the rents that's coming in, uh, there's a bit of a gap between the two. Yeah, there's a bit of oversupply in the market and, uh, you know, it broadca- it, basically the media lets us know straight away when there's an oversupply. Yes, they do. They hammer that one up, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Um, but it's actually, to, it's not a bad time of the market to, time to be in the market, becoming in no, at that point. No, well, that's where a lot of the astute of astute investors start researching that market start starting to move in. and they actually start buying probably in the next quarter yeah okay even getting... though that seems doomy and gloomy but yeah. you know yeah you know, yeah yeah okay all right well uh, if you'd like to know more about the property clock there is a link at the bottom of our uh, uh, screen here and we've produced uh, quite a comprehensive report about the entire property market the slump the boom the uh, slowdown and everything in between the two so please be my guest and download our free guide thank you